because we're in a hotel room <laughs> and we're gonna just embrace it. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put a filter on that. So I want to introduce Franklin Habit. Hey. And I have been aware of your work for a long time and I, and I find your Instagram page so, like I want more. I'm like, what's, how do I get in there and find out about this man? And mm. I've never taken a class from you or seen mm. anything about you. So I, I, I just didn't know how you'd be or who you'd be. Oh. And so the first time I approached you, you were so nice and open, and you knew who I was, which I was oh. like, are you crazy? Oh, I was thrilled. I so, was thrilled. Anyway, so finally we're here. It is very late in a hotel room in Chicago. This is how rumors get started, you know. Well, my door woman thinks I have all kinds of lovers. Oh. I have to say, oh. so many men come I would just me. work that if I were you. <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much for being here. I'm delighted. And of course I have... Dolores yes, as Dolores. well. She's here mm -hmm. as well. So I would love to, I would love to hear how you got into this because it mm -hmm. feels like your whole life story is full of all of these different facets. Uh, yeah, it's so yeah. many things. Well, th I mean, actually, that's really, it's cool to hear you say that because it's something that I've had to explain a lot. Really? When, well, the idea that I mean, yes, knitting—that's my passion. It's yeah. my profession. It's what I do, but. Um, Really, what I love is making things mm -hmm. for myself, or I should say, just making things. Mm -hmm. And in particular, I'm fascinated with anything that has to do with fabric, with textiles. And so, um, every once in a while, it's rare, but every once in a while, I've had somebody take me to task and say, Well, I mean, do you even knit anymore? Because in my Instagram feed, um, you know, there's, there will be periods of time where I am, I'm knitting 11 hours a day, but it's all on things that I can't show yet. You know, mm -hmm. it's for a knit along that's mm -hmm. coming up or it's a new Dolores outfit and I can't show it, mm -hmm. And but I'm doing other things. So I'll put a picture of my weaving and somebody will be like, I remember when you were a knitter. It's like, <laughs> I, I had a picture of my sweater up like last week. Yeah, you know? last week. Um, and that's honestly, that's how I keep my 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 self going yeah. is variety. Mm -hmm. That's oh, that's a that's good really word. important to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's like it and it comes out in different ways. It was so funny at the teachers meeting at the most recent vote knitting in New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Asked the question because we had it was amazing. So many new people on the Vogue faculty, which uh -huh. is spectacular. I saw the picture. It was. It was incredible. It was a it room felt full. Yeah. really good, good. Um, because there were so many. So many new people mm -hmm. that a lot of us had not met who had been Vogue regulars mm -hmm. stirs things up. It's mm -hmm. like opening a window and letting fresh air in, mm -hmm. which it makes it sound like all of us who have been there for a while like smell or something, but that's not what I mean. Um, <laughs> it's late, you know. Um, it, but it reminds me of when at my last theater job, I was the cover, mm. and I went on and I was so nervous about it, and everyone was very excited about it because it gives having one new element. Mm -hmm. It just changed it up for them. Oh, absolutely. So that's what I think of when you absolutely. say Absolutely. Well, and I, I loved it, all these new people. And since a lot of us had never met each other before, yeah. we, we did a, you know, we, we went around as, you know, what's your name? Yeah. And they said, what's your focus as a teacher? Oh. And I had to say, well, I don't, I have no focus. I, okay. I, I, I always think of myself as sort of by the time I showed up, um, my job is just to fill in the cracks mm. <laughs> between what other people like, what are do you teaching. Mean? Yeah. Right. Because you have people that their specialty is lace or their specialty is this. And it's it's super funny. I, I keep anytime I add a class, it's usually just based on whatever I've become fascinated with. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like there's enough there. And also, you know, to be perfectly honest, if it's not I'm not stepping on somebody else's part of the sidewalk. Love you, know, that. you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Um but if I feel like, oh I you know, then I just add it on, you know. So, so that really is important to me. If if I had to, this is shocking sometimes to people. If I had, to, I love lace. Well, if I had to knit lace just all the time, and that was all I could do was lace, and it was lace, lace, lace. Um, I don't have a brain that works well under those circumstances. Yeah. So I need to mix it up with like big knitting and small knitting and color knitting and texture knitting and just whatever suits my fancy. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's, that's 
clearly what you're, I think, picking up on in Instagram. Yeah. It's just, I, I have, my attention doesn't stay in one place very long. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like your focus is curiosity. Oh, oh, I'm so glad that you, well, yeah, because that, I probably use the adjective curious to describe, like, my ideal knitting student, my ideal knitter, more than anything else, mm. because that's, I actually say at the beginning a lot of a lot of my classes that I the things I'm going to ask of you are some concentration, but then a lot of curiosity and a lot of playfulness. Mm. Like I, if I do have a focus, it's that the classes I teach are all aimed at a curious knitter who wants to know more. Mm -hmm. So even if they take a um, an introductory level class with me, something like mosaic, I'm mm -hmm. teaching mosaic a lot these days. Mm -hmm. Um, you the how to of mosaic. I mean, that's where we start, but we also learn. So, how does it work at all? What's the fundamental structure? And then, what are the various fabrics that you can make knitting mosaic from one chart? One chart can generate all these fabrics. Mm -hmm. And then, the cherry on top of the Sunday for that class is um, a discussion and demonstration of so, how do you design a chart that can be knit as mosaic? Mm -hmm. What are the particular requirements? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I love it. Students usually love it. Occasionally, that's the class, you know, I'll get a, a complaint in a class like that where you know, I just wanted to knit in pearl. That's all mm -hmm. I wanted to mm -hmm. do. And I, I that's valid. Mm -hmm. Life's short. Do what you want to do with your own needles and yarn. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I really enjoy it when students are super, super curious mm -hmm. about everything. I feel like that's such a good way to, to approach a class, mm -hmm. especially if it's a class that maybe you're not interested in. Maybe someone is, I want to be with Franklin Habit no matter mm -hmm. what he's teaching me, because I want Franklin, not the mosaic. Like, maybe there is a student there. And I occasionally will hear that. Where I've had students come in and say, um, I, I teach a class right now that's one of my newer ones that's about um, knitting sweaters to fit your pet. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of focus on dogs, or cat your people, are, or your Dolores. <laughs> oh, she's a whole other She's her thing, own. Right? We know her measurements. It's, 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 oh, Pardon me. They're public knowledge. Right? <laughs> um, she she doesn't care, which what is a great way to be, right? Anyway, your pet. Yeah. Well, so, no, no, I just, so <laughs> I had, I, I taught that class at Stitches West. Oh. And it was the last class I taught. And I had three or four people who were like, you know, I'm just here because I wanted to find out what your approach was. Mm. I do not have an animal who will, Ever wear sweaters. I don't own an I'm animal. Not gonna do that. And <laughs> I have the a goldfish. Only, and, the, right, exactly, <laughs> and the only part of that that makes me nervous, because this is how mm -hmm. I am, is like, God, I hope you're not going to be bored to death. Mm -hmm. Like, then I'm concerned as mm -hmm. to how do I keep you interested? Mm -hmm. um, and one of them, she's a, I call her a frequent flyer. I mm -hmm. see her a lot. Mm -hmm. She's fantastic. And she said, I just, I always know it's going to be entertaining. I'm going to learn something. That's fine. So mm -hmm. just teach it. Don't mm -hmm. worry about me, which mm -hmm. was awfully kind because I am neurotic and I'm constantly worried about you know am I satisfying people mm -hmm. I think it's common especially when you have a group full of people that especially if you don't know them you don't know how things are gonna land and mm -hmm. I think I can relate to that feeling mm -hmm. but I also am wondering what you would say to this if the teacher is passionate about what they're teaching mm -hmm. is that enough Oh, that's a good question. Okay, if they're not interested, I right. think that's bad. That's usually, I think that's going to be a burnt out teacher, which is super that's unfortunate. Nice. Yeah. yeah, someone yeah. who's just like they've lost their exactly. interest. Because um, I think I feel like I could find almost anyone interesting on mm -hmm. any subject if they mm -hmm. bring passion to it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're feeling mosaic right now, mm -hmm. and you're bringing that in the room, mm -hmm. I'd be like, I don't even really care and know what's happening, but look at that. Look well, at that passion. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that and that you mentioned theater earlier, because mm. I will I will tell you this. Okay. If you are really, like, absolutely toasted on mm -hmm. a given subject, mm -hmm. um, that's a danger sign. Mm. Usually, if I get to that point with a the curriculum, then I retire it mm -hmm. at least at least for a while, possibly permanently. Mm -hmm. I just there's a class that I just took off my roster because I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is that um, if you offered it and people signed up for it and you're there in the classroom that day, like you had better go wherever you need to mm. inside yourself mm -hmm. and find passion for three hours or six hours mm -hmm. or whatever because 
it's not their fault you maybe don't feel like Correct. it that day. Same as when you go on stage. Totally. You know, it's like, well, I don't particularly feel like being a whatever your role is exactly. then. Exactly. So, but it is, it is sort of sad when I, well, I occasionally have encountered um, my, in my own feelings, you know, okay, I will be standing, you know, looking at my class list for the day and saying, do I have to? Do I really, <laughs> really have to? But the nice thing is, I, I cannot tell you of one instance where I didn't perk up once I got in the room with the students, mm-hmm. and yeah. the interest of the students mm-hmm. revives mine. It's yes, it feeds you. One exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So even on a day when honestly, you know, I've kind of had it mm-hmm. personally, mm-hmm. and I there and there are days. I mean, I I like your podcast because people are honest on mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. It's like any other job mm-hmm. that yes. there are days. When you don't bounce out of bed going, of oh my goodness, I'm so happy this is the life decision that I've made that, that totally you know, has brought me here. It's, sometimes I have to go teach when, honestly, I'd like to stay in bed. Of I'd course. like to be home with my dog. Yeah. I, yeah. But then I get in the classroom and the students are really awesome. Mm-hmm. They really are. It's um, Occasionally I get taken to task for like, you know, posting, I have posted a lot of things about classroom etiquette Mm, and mm -hmm. respect for teachers and stuff like that. Um, And, you know, mostly that's because, like, stories about good students are not particularly interesting. No, they're not. It's the the person who just, you know, (laughs) after three hours, you just think, you... Did you want to be here? Right. (laughs) And, and, you you know, and very occasionally, do you like knitting? Yeah, do you like... (laughs) Did you? <laughs> you see, they're just to get, but those are the those are the picturesque people. They yes. make for a good story. Yes. It's you know the rest of the students warm your heart. But I feel like this is the time you need to give a PSA for pit bulls. <gasps> oh, I'd love to. Oh, I should have brought a picture. Or I'll insert something. one here. I will insert okay. one here. Oh, you got. Oh, she's so good. Um, yeah. So my dog Rosamond is a. Um, beautiful little um, petite blue nose uh, purebred pit bull and um, I adore her and she's also a muse because um, the pet sweaters class happened because I'm based in Chicago and she's a very very light coat and um, she needs sweaters and she can't be out for large stretches of the year without clothes on turns out she also loves to wear sweaters that I make for her mm-hmm. and being a gay dog dad this is also G-D-D. just... Thank you. Thank Let's you. have yes. some order that. G-D-D. I'm going to have that on a t-shirt and a hat. G-D-D. Um, and that, frankly, I do like dressing her up. She just, yeah. you know, she yeah. she wears clothes well. She's the most beautiful figure, you know. Of course. Um, I would kill to have her abs, seriously. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, she's in... She is the loveliest dog. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the, the sweetest things about her is that she she loves people generally mm-hmm. but to see her with children mm-hmm. and especially the children that live in our apartment building um, I live in a lovely small apartment building where everybody knows everybody and everyone plays in the garden together and um, Rosamond is now um, uh, raising her second generation of children born in the building Love. you know like her first baby is the little girl who lives upstairs and um, the little girl lives upstairs starts like real like grade school next year Mm -hmm. Um, but her little brother is now you know just the teeny little thing and Rosamond loves to just sort of sit there and you know like do this and like like yeah and and started out right away the first time that she saw him Mm -hmm. she thought oh good another one and he had a pacifier Mm -hmm. and she just like went up and very neatly like removed the pacifier from his (gasps) mouth and like ran off a little way and then like turned around like come on like yeah, yeah let's go game. come on uh, <laughs> and uh yeah so yeah oh she's a sweetie that thank you a, for asking that about is, her that is a good psa for oh, pitbulls oh yeah let's talk about dolores oh right okay so well before we get to dolores actually yeah. i want to ask you sort of a general question because sure. what reminds me of your variety and your curiosity is sort of parallels in my own career mm. which is the artist's life. You know, mm. I, I haven't mm. asked you about your background or how you got mm. to knitting. You can That's share it. if you want. Sure. But as a, a creative person, I think I always knew right away 
I always knew right away. I knew <laughs> right away when I started my career that it was going to need to be a pie chart of sorts. Hmm. Because acting wasn't always going to pay the bills every day. Sure. And so there would have to be other skills mm. or other things mm -hmm. in there. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like my hustle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you want to talk about sort of how you envisioned the pie chart or, or what it is now. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, just in general. Well, that's I, I, I've said a lot because old expressions like this make me happy that it pays to have many strings to your bow. Which, exactly you know, what I'm saying. And it's... You know, I number one, I cannot pretend that anything I do is based on some sort of plan I had. Like, okay. you know, I thought someday I would like to teach knitting. I did. I fell ass backwards into just about everything, <laughs> um, and occasionally I will have it asked nicely, or sometimes not so nicely. Mm. Like, so you know, like, what do you? Why do you? You know, like, so why do your classes sell? Or you know, mm. what should I do to? And, oh, and the, okay, I see. And the, the difficulty that how do I see the all I can say is that I managed to put together a living so my hustle um, I'm fortunate enough that I have knitting skills and it turns out I have teaching skills people keep telling me that mm -hmm. um, and they keep showing up right <laughs> so I have the, the knitting skills and the teaching skills I have some design skills. Mm -hmm. I don't, we can talk about like how you feel about yourself at like different places in your mm -hmm. pie chart. Mm -hmm. I don't think of myself as a designer. Mm -hmm. I okay. design things. Mm -hmm. I try to do my best. Mm -hmm. um, I'm usually okay with them by the time they're done. But like, you know, to me, like Bristol Ivy is a designer, Agreed. right? Agreed. You know, Hunter Hammerson is a designer. Mm -hmm. I am someone who designs things yes. sometimes because that's part of my job. Got it, got it. Um, and, and then and there's writing. the writing, there's the writing and the illustration, the photography, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I've been able to tie those into mm -hmm, knitting, mm -hmm. and all together, it adds up to like, it'd be a pretty decent way of, you know, making a living. Yeah. It's great. I'm not digging ditches like my great grandfather did, mm -hmm. so. Um, and to your, yeah. to your point about variety, I, I would think that that keeps it fresh. It really does. Yeah. It does, because I'm not always... Um, like my friends who are primarily designers, mm -hmm. like that is their thing. They are turning out patterns, sometimes turning out patterns at a rate that mystifies me. Right? I knit so slowly. Yeah. I was like, oh, and that's, then I'm, you know, last week I made this shawl. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I made little bitty things. That's it's, because you do things on pins. It's perfect you must for my attention span. Right. Right. <laughs> that's that's, that's about as much time as I want to spend on a project right there. <laughs> It's horrible. It's hard because I'm usually I'm usually done with a project a long time before it's finished. Yeah. I, mm. Oh, know, oh! Does that sound familiar? See that quote again. So, I'm done with a project long before it's finished. Yeah, yeah. That's when it goes in the UFO pile. I and it it drives me nuts because a lot of times mine is deadline driven, so mm -hmm. I can't do that. It's like can't I really done. don't want to finish this, but mm. you have to. Someone's okay. deal. I mean, I could decide not to, but then I don't get paid. Then and that's that pie bad, chart you know. out the window. Yeah. Right. And mm. then my dog's expensive taste in Rubs. treats would be, you know, like compromised. <laughs> she needs things. She needs, she needs things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and so yeah, it the variety is good because I can I can rotate. Like I mm -hmm. yeah, my rotate. friends who who design and design and design how how you can sit in a, a room and knit for 11 hours yeah. every day and that's pretty much all you do like that would get to me after yeah. a while mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. being able to set aside the knitting and do like I write um, the book review column for Mason Dixon mm -hmm. and um, and I love doing that yeah. um, in part because all these beautiful books just keep yeah. showing up yes, at my door yes, yes, yes. Um, and that's oh, I really enjoy that part um, yeah. and I'll put a link so, to that underneath here. oh yes thank you yeah. um, and uh, I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to knit now. Okay, now we have a writing assignment. Yes. Then there's a drawing that has to be done. Mm -hmm. And even with when I'm knitting, I'm, I'm really knitting all kinds of things. I mean, you have yeah. some of my dollhouse stuff. Yeah. You have Dolores mm -hmm. and a Dolores outfit. It has um, variety. It's exactly. Yeah. It's big, small. It's lacy. It's not, you know, and I like that. So let's talk about... Who first, Dolores or the Dollhouse? Oh, it's up to you. I mean, it's your show. It's my so, it's my yeah. program. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about Dolores because okay. how, when, why, where. 
start from the okay. beginning. Okay. Well, the the short version mm -hmm. behind her, she she's not showing anything. Yeah, she's make not sure supposed she looks to. Good. Okay. Well, it's mostly just that you know those Stella. who know about Dolores know that she's very. She might be inclined to flip her skirts up or something. Dolores, like that. thank you for being here, by the yes, way. She's um, so she is uh, started out as a blog entry back in my old blog ages ago, um, because I was waiting for an arrival of spinning fiber mm -hmm. so that I could start playing with my first spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was of course, not before the internet, but a person <laughs> who I really trusted a lot, um, who's a very knowledgeable spinner said, um, the best fiber that you can get for your money is gonna be from this fiber farm. They, they did not, they had no website. They didn't, they didn't do anything but phone calls. Yeah. And I am not good on the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a really, really shy person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to call and I called and they were very sort of like gruff mm -hmm. with me. And and I got nervous and when, when it was finished, I had ordered, I, I meant to order Romney fleece mm -hmm. because my friend said, that's a great thing to start with. They do very good Romney. You know, it'll be prepared for everything. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. And after I hung up, I had that feeling like they were so, sort of mean mm -hmm. and I think I just ordered um the fle did I <laughs> did I really and then I started thinking well with my luck you know they'll send me like a sheep like they'll <laughs> think I ordered a sheep so that was so I I wrote this story about um that happening to me mm -hmm. that I I you know, open the door and this sheep has arrived <laughs> saying, you know, well, here's the bill of sale. And, we're, Oops, I just and of course, oh, here's the bill of sale. Here's the bill of sale. And rather than, of course, with my like sheep have this reputation for being like these little fluffy, docile, yeah. gentle. And like, I wouldn't get that. I would get this like old, like nasty, like, you know, can I say bitchy? Yeah, like same. bitchy sheep, right? Yeah. And she probably smokes. <laughs> so that was Dolores. So, and I was only going to write one or two like little blog entries oh. about her. People really liked her, and I really like. So anyhow, there were a lot of lot more stories. Um, she started showing up on T-shirts and mugs, and whatever. She developed a fan base, yeah. which was fun, yeah. honestly. Yeah. That people took to heart this character. And the most recent thing um, we're in year two mm -hmm. is that I went to Webs. Um, I really, really like Kathy and Steve Elkins, who run Webs. Mm -hmm. um, I had done work at their retreat for them. I had met them at different events and things. Um, and I brought them this idea. I said, let's let's do a Dolores project together. Mm -hmm. So what it boils down to is so the doll um, is so just the sheep part mm -hmm. um, was kit number one. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. could knit your own Dolores. She comes with her signature sunglasses mm -hmm. because she wouldn't be seen without them. Mm -hmm. And then um, every month since then, we have issued a new Dolores outfit kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, half the time, I designed them. Mm -hmm. um, this, for example, is the Sensuous You Caftan and Turban Ensemble, which um, if you read the product listing for this on the web's website, they are so good. They let me like kind of write very Dolores content mm -hmm. for the product list. So I explained that this is an homage to um, a um, art film that she appeared in in the early 70s called Dolores, or excuse me, called Emmanuel Goes to Rhinebeck. Um, <laughs> And uh, I mean, and Webb's just like, okay, cool. Like, that's funny it. people. So so sometimes the kits are me. Mm -hmm. And then on alternate months, the kits are um, real designers mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. who I have more or less like suckered into designing an outfit for her. So Patty um, Lyons did one. Uh, Patty Lyons did one. Amy Herzog did the first one. Mm -hmm. I mean, Fiona Ellis. I mean, you know, like, not me, like real designers, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just a few of them. Yeah. Um, uh, one of one of my real coups was that um, a buddy of mine who owns a yarn store in Paris, which what a horrible thing to do with your life, wow. right? Um, so he was our first international design, and he did this can can costume for her that was just frankly okay. was just kick ass with like a garter and yeah. like all of these naughty things, yeah. Um, and then Webs takes them and they they go into kits yeah. and yeah. So every month she comes out with a new kit, and we are we are just having so much fun with it. Yeah. And it's, um, it, I love it because talk about variety. I mean, I designed yeah. her to be smaller than a typical infant, mm -hmm. so, uh, but large enough that the designers can have fun with the 
details in the mm-hmm, design. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, she's not so tiny that you can't do any shaping or any texture or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's where we're at now with that. And we're actually even talking about, um, we have a lot of people who have asked for knit along, so mm-hmm. we'll probably be doing that for the doll. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and the kids just keep coming. In fact, it should be in the next day or so, uh, the next next kit will come out, which um, is her mermaiding outfit by Julia Farwell Clay. Oh my gosh. Um, because she needed something really, she got into mermaiding, yeah. and then she got invited to, and we're not allowed to say for sure, okay, so like disclaimer, but mm-hmm. it might be for a private mermaiding event on mm-hmm. Gwyneth's private island, okay. but we can't say no. for sure. Definitely. There's like clauses and things yeah. have been so maybe yeah but maybe not but maybe yeah now does Dolores have input on what her next outfit's going oh, to be oh all the time yeah. in fact you mentioned Patty Lyons yeah. and Patty did I have to say one of the most frank and forthright um on 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 Patty's blog accounts of the design process yeah because she was very Dolores opinionated Dolores I heard she has opinions about everything mm-hmm. um she's very fussy mm-hmm. um she throws tantrums mm-hmm. during fittings an awful lot. She she calls at 4 a.m. with design changes. <laughs> um, you know, she'll come at me and she's like, okay, so I have some ideas about whatever. And I'm like, get out of the bathroom. And she's like, yeah, but you know, yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it, it really is funny that, you know, this is the character that I write about a lot and I like to think she's sort of everything that I'm not. Like, yes. you know, she yes. gets to be loud where I'm actually really quiet yeah. and she's very confident where I'm actually really not. Yeah. And okay. yeah, so I love that. it's fun. Don't you, do you ever think about if you could have had a snapshot of today mm-hmm. back then? Oh, you know, oh, oh, I would have told people they were nuts. But, I mean, that this, <laughs> this would be a, what I would be doing. Isn't that so fun oh, about no, life? Oh, absolutely. I, I thought about that at, um, Stitches West at the Webb's booth, I did, this has become a thing now, uh, yeah. um, is signing Dolores's butt, like oh. tattooing her butt. One <laughs> the Sharpie? Aw- yeah, yeah. One, one really awesome Dolores fan showed up at a show and was like, would you do this? Mm-hmm. And I loved it, and I took a picture of it, and now that was my thing. Mm-hmm. So I would see, you know, one of the other teachers at, at Stitches West, and you know, so, okay, what do you do next? I'm like, I have to go to the web booth and sign sheet butts. <laughs> This is my life. This is why I went to Harvard. Um, this is totally, this is what I had in mind. Oh my gosh. You know? Yeah. What did you study at Harvard? Um, art history. Wow. So, yeah, and like, it's been useful. So, so there. It has. So there, it's been useful. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about the dollhouse because oh. I noticed you're doing some sewing for it yeah. recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my perception is that you're collecting antique pieces mm. specifically for it. Is this right? This is, yeah. Or start, so, start from the beginning. Oh, sure. Well, well, I mean, in a nutshell. Yeah, in a nutshell. Um, I always wanted a dollhouse. Um, uh, like as a child? As a child. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I'm a dude. And I was raised in a, a very uh, a typical American, like, 1970s 80s house where mm-hmm. that was not going to yeah, happen your role like is this. this yeah like boys get these toys and girls get those toys mm-hmm. um did you have sisters uh yeah i have a younger sister she's awesome mm-hmm. um she had barbie dolls and things like that yeah, yeah. hey sister yeah. um she she was and is just fantastic and often i was more interested in her toys yeah. than in my toys yeah. um she didn't have a doll house though that i remember mm-hmm. she had a lot of barbies but mm-hmm. they just kind of lived on a shelf yeah I always, 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 always loved the idea of having a dollhouse. And um, by chance, I found a $32 dollhouse at a charity shop near my place that, as I was standing there thinking about it, no joke, they came around and started putting up these little notices that, like, the next day was their big, like, 50% off the whole shop thing. And so I truly thought... uh, well, if it's meant to be, then so I, I was waiting in line when they opened the next day and went in and grabbed the dollhouse, which was then sixteen dollars. Yeah, I, I have um, a feeling you would have bought it for thirty two. <clears throat> I was, I felt so silly when I bought it. Even when I bought it, it was. Um, uh, it's hard to say when these things were built, but it was definitely homemade. Yes. Probably somewhere between 1915 and 1930. Oh my God. Yeah, so how it's big old. is it? How, how? It's um, ooh, about yay by yay. Okay. Um, like how and, many levels? Oh, it's got. Oh, let me tell you. So Sorry. it's three levels originally. Mm-hmm. So um, and with an elevator. Stop. Yes, with Back an in the elevator. 19, early 1900s. This is what's interesting is that so it's not just that I like 
dollhouses or have always liked dollhouses, mm -hmm. but since I couldn't have one, I spent a lot of my childhood poring over books about the history of uh -huh. dolls' houses and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it is a very close copy of commercially made houses mm. of a particular type. Oh, and the models built for French children, French children and German children usually had room boxes okay. more often than they had dolls' houses. Okay. But a lot of the dolls' houses that were sold for the French market had elevators, okay. had these little crank elevators that, you know, it goes up and down. Oh so it has, it has three levels. Um, one of the challenges is that it, um, uh, it is built at a scale that was um, fairly common for toys mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. for a very short period of time. Like so very small. It's, it's, yeah, it's smaller, so the usual is one twelfth or one inch in the dollhouse equals a foot in real life. This is one sixteenth, so it's a little smaller than that. Oh my goodness. And so that's been part of the challenge yeah. is, well, I was just... It didn't do anything for a long time. The outside was finished. The mm -hmm. inside was absolutely bare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a lick of paint. Nothing had mm -hmm. ever been done with the inside. Oh. So it well, it's, you know, it's interesting. So yeah. there are all sorts of stories you could. Well, and it was a blank that. slate for you. That was what was perfect. Oh. If there had been a scrap of wallpaper that was original, I would have felt like, well, I have to preserve that. Instead, yeah. this beautiful house in a style that I love that was more or less finished on the outside, if yeah. somewhat battered, and then inside and just go ahead go play with, with it canvas. yeah so nothing honestly though with all that was going on nothing much happened until um i took a vacation i was in rome mm -hmm. i was really frustrated because i was trying to shop for books in rome books being my big vice like that's the thing that i go nuts with mm -hmm. in terms of shopping and everywhere in rome like this bookstore, oh, well, we're closed right now, and this one's closed right now, and that one's closed right now. I even made an appointment at one I really wanted to go to, yes. and got there for my appointment right on time, and the guy was pulling the no! shutters down. I know, right. Ugh. So I'm like, well, screw you, booksellers yeah. of yeah. Rome. Yeah. So I um, I went to this wonderful, um, very pricey, uh, sort of gallery antiques place right in the Piazza Navona, uh -huh. and in the window they had these figures that... Aesthetically, like, I only ever owned, had owned one. It was a little, little teeny pug dog, like, truly, like, maybe an inch and a half long. And they're called, um, most commonly, they're called Vienna bronzes or cold painted bronzes. Mm -hmm. And they were a big, like, turn you know, from the 1890s into the 1900s. They were made primarily in Austria. And the style that I really loved were these um, anthropomorphic, animals mm -hmm. and they had these two sort of regency gentlemen and one was a fox and one was a dog uh -huh. i bought them yeah because i had saved up all this book money i yeah. wasn't spending anthropomorphic meaning it's uh, like an animal posed as a human uh, yeah like dolores okay. dolores is anthropomorphic. Got it. yeah thank you um, i did and, not go to harvard so I, sometimes i need help i uh, know i appreciate <laughs> that too because i just you know i just I'm, want to make sure when I, I talk like that that's you know no but i want to make sure i was caught up oh you got okay. it yeah got it Yep, so I brought them home. Mm -hmm. Turns out I didn't think about this. They fit in the dollhouse. Oh. Like they were like they were made to go in. Is that fo why it's fox and box? Fox and box. And because box. Okay. yeah, so one's a fox and the other one is a boxer dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, just everything about this sort of built on itself. I um, love that. Well ultimately what it meant was so I had once I had figures in there, mm -hmm. it revitalized my interest in working with the dollhouse. Yeah, because now it's for them. Well and then I, I started posting on Instagram mm -hmm. and I didn't mean for anything to happen, but the people who are friends with me on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and um, they really liked, I started not writing stories exactly, but like stupid little vignettes about, you know, joking about the fact that like they're moving into this house and then, oh, the fireplace looks really nice. And then suddenly like the fireplace is gone. And where is the yeah. fireplace? And the, you know, the workmen have moved the fireplace to this hallway on the second floor. And like Goofy said, well, people really liked it. I and like I was enjoying so what's happening now is because there's so much support and honestly, the joy of sharing my dream toy mm -hmm. with people, um, I'm going to do a book. And Amazing. as a big part of the book, and it's part of the story that's, yeah. you know, emerged as I worked together, um, is that Fox and Box are um, dressmakers. They... they they have a, a, an atelier basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and 
that's a big excuse for me that number one, the dollhouse has um, all of these things for embroidery and sewing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, you know, collecting, now collecting all those, exactly. the miniature things. Right. Yeah. And, um, uh, and also I'm making, I'm, I'm making as many of the textiles in the house as I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, for example, what is like this to one? so that is a coverlet, um, knitted in, in an adaptation, a miniaturization of a 19th century knitted coverlet pattern. Love. Um, yeah, I, I had, I had a good time with that. Although mm-hmm. I will say that was one of those things that when it was finished, I felt really good that it was finished. Yeah. Um, and these are little stockings. And then I felt like they needed Christmas stockings. And so those were all knit. Those are done. One of the, the blue one is, is Rowan lace, what? Rowan fine lace. The other one is um, green mystery lace from my yeah. stash, you know, yeah. like an oddball yeah. that I thought was pretty. And, um, and they're oh. knit like, uh, they're knit like regular oh, stockings. They are. Yeah. The class where I teach the preliterate sock formula, uh-huh. um, it, it works at any size. Oh, Those were done, goodness. I think on 14 stitches was my cast on oh, number incredible. and everything else is done off of that. I can provide you with pictures if yeah, you'd sure. like. Sure. Yeah. I'll answer yeah. them. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Now, have you read The Miniaturist? I just got a copy in the mail yesterday, okay. so that's a very timely question. Yeah, because I'm excited to. You're gonna. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna say. I don't know what books you like, mm. but it's. I mean, just hearing you talk about the books mm. and the miniatures, like I think you're gonna like it. I'm looking for, and it's. Um, I do know that the story ties into um, the history of miniature houses, where they they began as baby houses, where they were really toys for they toys. They were toys for adults with lots of money Mm -hmm. and um those were the first things that i drooled over Mm -hmm. like the um the examples in uh the rijksmuseum Mm -hmm. in amsterdam are exquisite Mm -hmm. well they were built for grown women who had lots of time yeah and wherewithal and so i'm super excited to dig in and read it because i haven't seen the mini series and i don't watch it read the book read the book first yeah i would i would think so you'll have to text me later about that oh i will do a review on mdk that's actually what a good idea. You're welcome. I could, thank you, because I could, yeah. Yeah, I can tie, I can tie that in. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I could t- I could see how passionate you are about this, and mm-hmm. you're drawing me in. Like, now I feel like I need a dollhouse. <laughs> There's been a lot of that going it's around, so cool. which makes me feel kind it's of awesome. good. It's awesome, yeah. You know? yeah. And we could talk about more things for hours, obviously. Mm-hmm. So just in the last few minutes we have, yeah, yeah. do you want to just, for? I, I mean, I'm, I'll be shocked if anyone has never met you before, but do you want to oh. just let the people know hmm? about knit alongs or classes or oh, how yeah. best to follow along with you sure, sure, if they sure. find a seed that has really oh. resonated with oh, them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, <laughs> so I have a website, mm-hmm. which is just franklinhabit.com, which is wildly in need of an update. Um, you know, it's one of those things that I'll just get around to. I, my don't point. go to christylast.com warning. Th- th- there's lots You'll of, see a woman you know, with collagen in her face and you'll be like, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> Okay, so it's nice to have someone sympathize we with are that there situation, together. right? He um, had hair. I no, did. I just, I just about. Actually, you know what I have? I still have my dyed beard, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I just, I one day oh. I just went, I'm tired of dying it. I'm sick yeah. of it. Look, oh, I'm going to go. Gray. I'm not dying mine, so just, uh, we're also there. Awesome. Right? Can you see them? Like the, Tell me you can see them. They look beautiful. I'm trying to will them That's to lovely. have a really good streak. I talked to my hair. I think you're going to have that. I'm like, okay, just... Do one of those Stacy London things. I, well, know? that's what I was really happy yeah. that I've got this yeah, kind of nice like and even. double skunk stripe yeah. thing going on. Yeah. It's kind of becoming my yeah. thing. Okay, so, anyway, so yeah. anyway, website. What were we talking about? <laughs> Franklinhabit.com. Um, yeah, so website. yeah, so my website is franklinhabit.com. Um, <laughs> and but you also where a lot of people, if you just want to come play with me like more casually, yeah. Um, I have a Facebook uh, artist page. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll put all of these links this, underneath. You yeah, and I'm on remember. Instagram and I'm on Twitter, yeah. and that's kind of where I had to stop because I so many. I mean, I don't think I'm that old yet. Some people may beg to differ with me. I don't think I'm that old yet, but I have hit a point where someone said something about TikTok to me, and I don't went, do it. I'm sorry, I'm full. I just can't. I have officially reached yeah. whatever that that a crotchety ages where I just <laughs> go. I I couldn't even. I I belong to Snapchat for yeah. about. 10 minutes yeah. away, and then, and it was only because wonderful teacher who is also um, my tech editor, bless her, for the Dolores series, right? Her name's Sarah Peasley. She's hey, Sarah. so much fun. We were both like like old fogies going, we'd heard about Face Swap, 
Mm. So before... A stitches, a stitches Midwest banquet. We're sitting together and we're trying to make a face swap work. And it's, you know, it's like watching Queen Victoria like tapping at a cell phone. Yes. Like, how is this supposed to? Well, and it wouldn't work, and it wouldn't work, and then suddenly it worked, and then her face was on, and and we were both so frightened, we Horrified. screamed, and the whole room got quiet. Like the whole banquet room. <laughs> got quiet because we were just so horrified and then we just deleted it immediately it was the, the most disturbing thing so yeah but i'm on i'm on twitter instagram facebook um and dolores is also dolores has her own facebook page and her own um her own special like info hub on yeah. the the web's website so we're all over yeah. you know i yeah. would say that dolores would rock tiktok Hard. It would be kind of her thing. Yeah. However, mm. I've been told by the teenagers that I am not welcome there. That it's cringy Ooh. if I'm oh. there. Oh. oh. And oh, so I think you're right about not doing TikTok. Well, you know, if I have that excuse, I don't want to be cringy. No, don't be cringy. Heaven knows I don't want to be cringy. Oh, I only intend to be cringy for my, my nieces about to become a teenager. Yes. And I figure we're going to go in either either the direction where I'm the super cool like gunkle that she can come to gunkle gunkle. Um, or I'm just going to become like Mm -hmm. her mom's wingman Mm -hmm. in terms of just like embarrassing Mm -hmm. her in public a lot so one tip would be don't do TikTok yeah Yeah. so but I'm definitely online and I love that I enjoy it like it is nice good crowd online Mm -hmm. you know good people and I do I do I am like addicted to posting so yeah it's actually nice to hear you say that you like looked at my Instagram feed and sort of wanted more uh-huh. because sometimes I feel like I'm just going on and on. And no, I think you have some mystery there, mm. and I like that. And I've never been a man of mystery before. Well, there you go. And I do appreciate the hashtag usage because then I can find the curated, you know. Because I appreciate the same thing. Mm-hmm. I love it. If someone's got a project and they have a hashtag, mm-hmm. then I I don't have to scroll through. Yeah. Or you could do like a highlights, I guess. Yeah. Maybe stories, but mm-hmm. I do like that a lot. Yeah. So, anything you would like to to comment on um, on just the knitting community or being a man who knits? I mean, do you <laughs> do you want to talk about it? Because uh, well, one thing I found interesting that you point, I hope you don't mind me sharing. Please. Is that you were talking about how your mother was. A hobbyist of of, mm-hmm. of something that didn't match her gender, mm-hmm. yeah, and how it really bothered her that people mm-hmm. just wanted to talk about, oh, you're a woman mm-hmm. who likes cars, yeah, and that that bugs you when people are like, wait, you're a man who knits, like it, they only want to talk about that. It is true. There was a yeah, it's, it, there, there, I had I had an interview request for, and I will not name the podcast, mm-hmm. but um, who that was what they wanted to talk mm-hmm. about, and I explained, and it's standard with me. You heard this from me yeah. before, you know, yeah. um, was that I I really don't talk about especially if it's going to be the whole topic yeah I don't talk about well it's like this because this is what I find is um I used to think it was a big deal to be a man who knitted Mm -hmm. and then I hung around for a while with knitters generally Mm -hmm. and found out that aside from the occasional like dumb remark from a stranger Mm. um and those can be interesting i do think that guys get some different ones Mm, um yeah yeah, like like if you're a man knitting in public and a certain kind of person sees you Mm. what they will do is they will come over and they will try to reassure you that you're okay you you don't need to be ashamed that you're doing this weird thing (laughs) and you're like "Um." okay and they'll start talking to you about you know because um this is is like you hear about uh heart surgeons Mm -hmm. because you know surgeons you know they a lot of surgeons now what's really funny is that i have met a lot of knitting um surgeons um most of whom have been women and none of whom (laughs) have said that they do this to keep their fingers nimble right so you hear that um you hear about rosie greer who didn't uh knit who did needlepoint, which is right. what he was famous for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one that you get, and then there were the Irish fishermen and they were in their boats and they were making their nets yes. and then uh, cabled sweaters happened. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's all of these macho yes. stereotypes. Yes. That, so you're or okay. the army socks. Oh, army socks. Yes. And you know, one. and I just, and mm-hmm. it's, I mean, so guys maybe get a different kind of weird comment, mm. but what I basically found out is, Honestly, it just doesn't matter, you know? The only thing I would say is that it's a shame that I, even now, in some places, find that um, boys are discouraged not only from knitting, um, but we have gotten into a really weird place 
in this country where, and I, I, this is something I did suffer from as a boy, mm-hmm, as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a creative hobby, that's for girls. Whatever it is, it's for girls. If it's a destructive hobby, like that's for boys. Like girls make things and boys destroy things mm-hmm. and that's how it's supposed to be. And it's just nonsense. Like I'm all about, it. let people do what makes mm-hmm. them happy. I heard someone recently, the son was going to be in music and the, and the mother said, you can't do that because you have to provide a living. Oh. And it made my heart hurt because mm-hmm. I don't have sons, so I mm-hmm. can't, I cannot comment on this because mm-hmm. I don't have sons. Mm-hmm. I have daughters, but it, it is interesting to think about what happens, you know, and it, it comes from your own background. It comes mm-hmm. from society. And mm-hmm. I think that's why I've been so curious about just having a month dedicated to men knitting just, just to show the world, like, like it's. That's like, awesome. We We're... can all use publicity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm serious. But I like talking about it. I yeah. want to shine a light on, on yeah. everyone who knits. And mm-hmm. so that's why I like Mansion. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to touch on it a little bit because it is Oh, but that's okay. And it's, you know, you know it's mostly just, it, I've had unfortunate, weird experiences where, you know, just like, just like, um, you know, my mother wanted to talk about her hobby and instead all she would be able to talk about was being a woman in mm-hmm. her hobby. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, and I, I like to talk about knitting, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Something that's been hard for me is my family will say, what do I tell people that your job is? Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So what go, do you do? Go, um, uh, <laughs> go. Go. Um, go, frankly. I actually just started saying that I'm an artist. Oh, I like um, that. Because often in Chicago, that's enough to get people to just sort of go, oh, oh okay. And then they mm-hmm. just walk away, mm-hmm. you know, and that's. Mm-hmm. usually fine yeah so they struggle with that and so I say just tell them I'm a knitting youtuber and they're like but that kind of but, but is that a job that's not a job I will, it, you're right, exactly you know, I'm not, and, yeah. exactly you're playing the role and so and I say if they act that way then you say mm-hmm. yeah why haven't you watched it yet <laughs> that's it you don't have to explain yeah. to anybody but yeah so, but that is hard to especially when you do multiple things mm-hmm. it's difficult to you know, I just figure out what to write on that line in my tax form. Yeah, yeah. Occupation. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, what day, what hour Dolores. of the day is it? Dolores. Yes, I'm Dolores' <laughs> sidekick, basically. I also yeah. think it is a shame that the, that the stereotype is grandma's knitting in a rocking chair. Oh. That's, I, every I, time I see that, I'm like, but we're so much more. Exa- I did a whole article, actually, um, that it's so funny. It's one of the things that I wrote that's been most passed around. Mm. So um, I write for Lion Brand's mm-hmm. blog. Yes. And I wrote a piece that was more or less an open letter to journalists looking to write about the fiber arts. Oh, and it was good. exactly that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if your headline says something about, you know, not just for grandmas anymore, like your headline sucks and you need to go back and redo that. Doing like, a disservice. That's not, yeah. you know, and believe me, I have nothing... I have no problem with grandmas. Those We're are my so people. so happy the grandmas knit. Grandmas and I, we and listen to the same music I'm generally. I'm going to be a grandma knitting. So I'm not against it. No. It's just, it's more. It's just, well, and it's also, it's not, you know, this is what it is. It's not that I have an issue with grandmas or an issue with grandmas knitting. Me either. It's that when grandma is used in that sense. A negative it, way. That's it. They are insinuating that to be an old woman is to be a negative thing. Who would want mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. what an old woman... Well, There's always know, in that in that frame. I spend most of my time in rooms surrounded by women, and frankly, like, what women do, what old women do, usually is something that sounds really good to me, mm-hmm. and something Should be I want to hang out. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, so, yeah, to cut so, you off. No, not at all, no, <laughs> not at all, because you, you hit the nail on the yeah, head. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's all kinds of things that we can try to change about the stereotypes and we're doing it here on Christy Glass Knits yes. with Dolores. And bless you. Yes, with Dolores and who so, defies stereotypes. And so I Dolores. hope <laughs> I hope you'll be on again because we have so much more to talk about. I would love that. Yeah. But underneath this video I will I will connect you with all the things we've talked about today so you can follow along the hashtags and all I mean there's way more. So you will do a deep dive today after this video I and enjoy will. more about Franklin Habit and I thank you so much for your time. I am delighted. I am thank you for having me. I have been looking forward to this for what I mean what months yes. since we arranged this. Yes. So. And likewise. Oh thank you. Thank so, you. So happy match. Bye bye. Bye. They're they're oh. <laughs>